I wake up now and I'm grateful for opening my eyes in the morning and I'm grateful that I'm here to see another day and that I was given this opportunity to live. I was given a second chance in a way. I want people to know my story and I want people to see who I am and hopefully there's someone out there like me that's been through what I've been through and can see this and realize that the dark days, they don't last. It gets better. It's a lot of hard work, but it gets better. I was in a really bad car accident um, in 2017. I lost my leg. I um, was hospitalized at shock trauma for two weeks. I was very fortunate. I can still walk. I need an assistive device, but I'm still able to walk and do all sorts of things. So I'm, I'm fortunate. I'm very, very fortunate for having the life that I do. The night of the accident, I was on my way home from a friend's house and my car spun out and hit the Jersey wall. And was disabled in the fast lane of traffic. My driver's side door facing oncoming traffic. And I got out of my car. A lady had stopped to help me and said, hey, grab your phone your belongings, and I'm gonna call the EMS. This is where it happened. Um, as you can see, people drive very fast, and uh, most of them probably aren't paying attention. So as you can kind of see, um, there's a little bit of a hill that comes up, and that's actually the driver that hit me. He basically, it was too late, he didn't see me. And that's pretty much the last thing I remember. Uh, I don't remember the moment of impact. I'm really, really grateful for that. Um, I remember waking up and I saw the lady, the police officer. She was flashing her flashlight at my window. And she was asking, ma'am, ma'am, are you there? Are you with me? And I said, yes, I said, please get me out. I looked down and I, I saw my leg. I wasn't in any pain. I had a weird feeling. So I looked down and I saw my leg and I begged her and begged her to get me out of that vehicle. And she said, we have to wait until EMS gets here to help you. And that's when I went unconscious again. I don't remember them pulling me out of the car or any, any of that. I'm kind of um, grateful because I'm sure that was a very traumatic event that happened without me even really being aware of what situation I was in. Um, very scary, really scary. The first responders, they definitely are my heroes. I do know that if they wouldn't have gotten to me and gotten me out and gotten me to the place shock trauma to where I needed to be, that I probably wouldn't be sitting here today. I could never imagine what pulling up to my accident was like for them. But I'm so grateful that they did and I'm so grateful for them and I don't think I could ever repay them for saving me. Um, so this was, a, this was actually was my seat 
and my legs would have been hanging out and I was uh, reaching under that side when I made the phone call and I still had my legs hanging out at impact and this is my door. That's my driver's door and the window. And as you can see, they had to take my door off to get me out on this side. Um, and all of the glass from the windshield, initial impact busted it in, uh, severely damaged. Fortunately and unfortunately, I was unconscious for the arrival and the extrication and I don't really have any of that. And part of me thinks that it's better because uh, your brain has a funny way of blocking out things that uh, are just too much to handle. And I think psychologically at the time and now, if I were to remember that whole experience, I think it would have uh, affected me in a very different way than it has. I haven't really figured out what I want to do yet, but I know that I want to work with amputees, whether it be um, creating an organization to help fund with prosthetic legs for people that can't afford them, help with adaptive equipment for vehicles. Um, even I've even thought about going back to school to be a prosthetist and make prosthetics. Um, it, it, it's kind of an open field, but I know that this has given me a purpose now to have that insight in the future to something really to dream for. And I know that there was a reason that this happened. And I think, I think I'm going to do a lot of good with it. I think there's a lot of brighter days ahead past all the struggles that we've been through. Good thing is I have an amazing dog. We adopted our amputee dog, Sally, um, six months after my accident. Me and my fiance saw a picture of her on Facebook at one of the local shelters. And I said, yeah, she's a special dog. Like, go meet her. And she walked through the door and she was huge. I didn't expect her to be 90 pounds, but she was just the happiest dog. And I, I immediately connected with her and I think I think there's a part of her that knows that she has the likeness, that we're both missing a limb. I had such a special connection and she holds such a dear place in my heart. She fits in, she's perfect for our family. I love her so much. My trauma, I live it every single day because I have to put on my prosthetic and I'm reminded every single day what happened to me. And for a while, I would wake up in such a bad mood because I'm like, this isn't the life that I thought I was going to have. But then I start waking up and I'm like, this isn't the life that I thought I was going to have. But this is a life that I can really, really use for good. I, I can help so many people that have been through this. And, and that's what has gotten me through the trauma is using it for good and using it to help others. And in the end, it helps me. Thank you.